And next to him is Julie Smolensky. Julie is president and CEO of Lifeway Kefir. Hello, everyone. Hi. Okay, so you probably all know what I do, and you probably drink our products or drink kefir or kushet tvarog. Um, so, okay, I'll just go back to the very beginning so that, right, you want me to start? We'll go back to the Soviet Union. All right, so <laughs> we're going way back. We're going way back. So, you know, my parents, like all of our parents, um, uh, were living in the Soviet Union. My father was very uh, active and interested in what was happening in the, uh, the country and political environment, and he felt incredibly oppressed, like so many of us. Um, he protested the government there, the regime at the time, and was consistently arrested and had dreams of a, you know, a better life, an entrepreneurial life, um, and freedom. And he was educated, and he was an engineer, and he, uh, the, I, I mean, these stories are very poignant to me and really uh, guide me today. He wired a, a radio, and he would be able to listen to Voice of America to get information on the other side because they felt very secluded. And when he heard what was happening outside of the wall, he said, I'm out. I want to leave. This is not the place I want to raise a family. And so in 1975, the year I was born, they started the process to leave and come to the United States. So we were the first 48 families to be settled in Chicago, the very, very beginning. So we paved the path for everyone else to come and nobody knew, you know, it was hard to communicate. No one knew what was, was here and awaiting for us. So my mother opened up uh, two years later, uh, the first Russian delicatessen many of you probably shopped at and, and your families went to for your daily food needs. And, um, you know, she, she, it was 1978 when she opened up her first store. She was pregnant, she had a second child coming, but, and she, she didn't know that women's lib was happening. You know, women only got the right to access credit in 1974. So four years after that, she opened up her first business, which is like phenomenal, like what an ama amazing woman. And so that sort of started the, I, the process of my family entering the food business. That she said, well, look, all these Russians are gonna start to come, Russians, Ukrainians, let's just say Russians for ease they're gonna to come to the United States and the food is different. There's lots of food, but it's different than our food from our homeland. And we need to have food that our people know and like and, and it feels like home. So that's the start of it. So then they were in, um, you know, my dad, these are interesting stories. When he came, probably similar to all of your family stories as well, you know, drove through alleys of the, Chicago alleys, looking in garbage dumpsters for broken electronics, broken TVs, broken lamps. He fixed them, and then he'd go and sell them. Like, these were the weeks, you know, the survival tactics. And he was an engineer, so he eventually did get a job as a draftsman. So 10 years into this process, they were in Germany uh, at a food trade show, buying, you know, looking for importing uh, the different food that we we started to import and distribute all around the country in New York and LA, wherever Russians were moving and opening up uh, food stores, my mom became an, imp an importer and distributor. And so that's, they bought a bottle of kefir in Germany and my dad said, America has everything, but it doesn't have kefir. And my mom said, well, you're an engineer and you build plants for all these different companies and machinery. Why don't you build a plant, you make the product, and I'll sell it in my distribution system. So six months later, they incorporated the business. They were people of action. They incorporated the business, and that's how Lifeway Foods was started in 1986. So we just hit our 30th anniversary. We've been around for 30 years, which is phenomenal. Thank you. It's an incredible story. Um, at the same time, this, so this is think, think back what was happening, 1986, uh, Reagan and Gorbachev just started to meet to talk about the peace process and tearing down the wall. And there was a big fascination with what was happening with the Soviet Union and 
um, Americans were like wanted to know what was life in the Soviet Union. Well, who are these Soviets that are here now in America? Who are these Soviets that are coming to the United States? And my father had this American dream story, and people latched on. And Time Magazine, I will never forget it. The when Jesse Jackson ran for president, Jesse Jackson was on the cover of Time. That was the issue that my dad was in, and Lifeway Foods was in. Uh, so it was just a, a historical time in our in our life. And um, Reagan actually brought a case of Lifeway Kefir to Gorbachev to say, "This is what your immigrants are doing here." You know, this is what this is what entrepreneurialism is, and this is what you could have in your country. Tear down the wall. Let's make peace. So I always think that Lifeway had a part in creating, uh, I think, uh, a more peaceful, a more democratic, um, you know, place. But uh, so. For me, I was never interested in business. I had zero interest. I wanted to be a psychologist. I actually thought that business and Lifeway and my parents' businesses took away my parents because they were working like all of our parents were. But I had like a resentment for business. I wanted to be a psychologist. Um, I went on to study psychology. I went to grad school. Um, I wanted to get a PhD or whatever, a graduate degree in psychology. But I um, ended up in a kind of a, a life or death situation at some point and kind of took a step back from that industry or space and went to work for my dad just part time thinking this was going to be like a part time gig until I figured out what I was going to do. And within two weeks, I fell in love with what he was doing and the idea that I could change people's lives, which is what I wanted to do, change the world through health and wellness and like have a positive spin on it and be for profit because so much of the, the, the social services are nonprofit. So I thought here we could make a change in people's lives, but for profit. And so I came to work for him, and I spent five years working side by side with him, and we had a lot of time to like repair our relationship. I got to understand why he was gone, why he was what he was working towards, and I really caught the bug as well. And uh, I worked with him for five years until, as everybody knows, in 2002 he had a sudden heart attack and passed away. And um, that night, uh, you know, the, the story is kind of now famous. You know, the the idea that. You know, everyone comes to gather at the spouse's home when somebody dies. All the friends, the community comes. So we had like hundreds of people at our home. And the closest of friends, the people that were the best friends, said, forget it. This company's done. It's over. Sell your stock. There's no way a 27-year-old girl is going to run this company. It's over. And that was really painful to hear. And I was also a woman studies minor. So I was like, screw you, watch me. And my father you know, taught me that. My father put really strong female role models in front of me all the time. He um, uh, you know, t showed me like, you know, people like Christy Hefner, who took over her father's business, Playboy, um, from Hugh Hefner. He showed me. Um, Jan Schakowsky, who he, you know, had one, the first fundraiser for Jan before she became a congresswoman. He showed me, um, you know, all different female role models, put them in front of my face and said, Julie, you could be like that. And he never once said to me, like, you need to get married. You know, he actually, like, brushed that off. He said, you'll have time to get married. Don't worry about it. Focus on your career. So he really pushed me, pushed education, pushed um, you know, pushed a, a strong work ethic for me. And um, th those are some of the reasons why I think I was able to have the confidence to know that I could actually run Lifeway. And those early days were really diff difficult. Uh, I really did feel that actually, it, I mean, the community continued to buy our products, of course, but the community, like, left me. They, like, did not come to me minus a handful of people that are even in this room. Most people just abandoned, I feel like, me, my family, and the time when I really needed them. But the most interesting thing is that strangers came to me, strangers that read the story in the newspaper, you know, Americans, just people, like, out of the blue, people that I know, never heard of, came to me and said, we're here to support you, we're here to help you, 
join this group, join this group, come here, we'll mentor you. And I got a lot of support from outside of um, the, the community. And so, um, and it was also, of course, very difficult for me. You know, I remember at my dad's funeral, there were, may, maybe some of you were there, I'm not sure, but there were, you know, hundreds of people. And when you're so vulnerable and, and you share so much pain, it's very, like, it's, it's hard to, like, continue, you know, to, to show up again, I guess. And so we really retreated and we really focused on the work and we, I, I really focused on the work for years. I, I literally worked 18 to 22 hour days and um, we're still here. Here we are, you know, so we've been doing it for 14 and a half years. We've grown from a $12 million company to about $150 million. Um, with the market cap, let's say roughly, I don't know, 300 million. I don't check it every day, but let's say 300 million market cap. Um, I believe we can go to 500 million plus. We've expanded into Mexico, Europe, Canada, Asia. Um, so we're really expanding our footprint. And um, on the side, uh, it was also very important for me to continue to do different work since I'm not just gonna like leave Lifeway. I don't have the luxury to be like, oh, I'm gonna start a new career, or join a new company. But I had just personal curiosity and interest to do other things. So I became a producer of different films, um, one of which is an Oscar, Emmy, and Grammy nominated film, an Emmy winning song that was um, in uh, Lady Gaga and another woman, Diane Warren, produced a song. So Emmy-winning executive producer, which is incredible. I started a nonprofit, and we support so many other organizations. And before I forget, I would like to make an announcement that Lifeway is going to donate, uh, make a gift to JUF for $5,000 to support all the work you did. So, yeah. That was a really good pitch, and you should do that again. So that's the background of Lifeway. <laughs>